How y'all doing? Now I'm back again with another video. So today is going to be the first video and a new little series I'm going to do that I'm going to call Home Brews. Woo! Fancy! So basically it's going to be a series where I show you some neat little projects, neat little programs you can set up on a Raspberry Pi, specifically Raspberry Pi, as that's really the only thing I've messed with myself personally. And so for the first video of this, I figured we needed to start at the basics, which is how do you actually set up a Raspberry Pi? So that's what I'm going to be showing you uh, today. Specifically, it's going to be what's called a headless Raspberry Pi, meaning, um, see, you can kind of set a Raspberry Pi up one of two ways. Um, one is, a, you would, I guess you would say a normal way, where it has a like a, a GUI desktop environment, and you would connect a mouse and a keyboard and a monitor and interact with it. Uh, the other way, which is the primary way that I interact with them, is what's called a headless Raspberry Pi. Um, this means it has no graphical, it has no desktop environment installed at all. The only way you interact with it is through a uh, uh, terminal. And uh, it, you don't connect a keyboard or mouse or anything to it directly. You just remotely, uh, connect, remotely connect to it and uh, interact with it that way. So before we get started, um, if you've been enjoying my content, you haven't subscribed yet, um, drop me, drop me uh, subscribe. I greatly appreciate it as I'm trying to grow this channel as much as I can at the moment. Um, by the way, update if anybody was curious that they saw, I think maybe one of my last two videos and maybe a live stream um, where this little shithead destroyed my hands. Uh, my hands are mostly healed up now, so I'm essentially operating at more or less uh, full capacity. Don't like that shit. So with that said, let me show you the goods. I'm gonna smack you. I swear to God. Out. Quit. So we're at raspberrypi.org. This is the um, official website for Raspberry Pi. Now, what we are here because we need to actually download an operating system to put on the Raspberry Pi. And you, say, oh look, they have. That's neat. Raspberry Pi has their own uh, imager now. That's neat. Well, we're not going to use that though. We're going to use the one that I use. Um, so you see you have two options here for operating systems. Operating systems. One is the operating system itself, which is Raspbian, which as it says, it's based off of, um, and if you know anything about other Linux distributions, another Linux distribution called Debian, if the name didn't give it away. And then you have another one here uh, called Noobs. And what this is, is it kind of like walks you through uh, setting up a operating system. Uh, which actually seems kind of redundant to me because really the only real part you have to do is lash it onto the stick. So if you already know how to do that, I don't see why you need noobs in the first place. So we're going to download uh, Raspbian. And if you look at Raspbian, you'll see there's three options. You will see there's Raspbian with desktop and recommended software. So if you just wanted to install a desktop environment on your Raspberry Pi, with a bunch of stuff already set up and you just kind of, you know, start it up and get going, this is what you want, you would want. If you want a desktop environment, but want a little more control in terms of what you put on there, you'll want the regular desktop one. But we're gonna be using this one, which is a Raspbian Buster Lite. This has no desktop environment whatsoever. Um, if you were to connect to it, only thing you would get is a, is a terminal prompt. And uh, so I've already downloaded this. Um, so now comes the question, how do you actually put this on a uh, micro USB, so a micro, not micro USB, micro SD card? So by the way, uh, by default, uh, Raspberry Pis use micro SD cards to boot off of. Um, so there's like a terminal way that I'm not really gonna bother showing. And there's a couple other, there's a couple programs that you can use to like, to put operating system images onto um, like media, like USB sticks and SD cards. Um, my favorite one that I've always used for quite a while now is this thing called Etcher. Um, and the interface is super simple. I'm gonna show you what it is. I'm not actually going to flash it right now as I've already done this because it, it takes a few minutes and I kinda of wanted to just, just keep going. Um, and it has, they have the Linux version, I believe is an electron app. 
And then there's Windows, there's the portable and installable version, and then whatever the Mac one is. Um, so I'm going to show you what that looks like. So if we go over here, and I'm going to start at your, because I moved it into my path so I can just run it. Um, it's going to start up, and it's, it's very simple. Um, apparently you can even flash stuff on URL now. URL now, that's pretty nice. Um, so let's say you've downloaded that. Um, that Raspbian light image that I told you to download. So you're going to go to downloads and it's right here. You're just going to pick your image and then you'd pick which device to uh, flash it onto, which in my case is the S my micro SD card over here. And then you just, you just let it go. Um, as I said, I've already done this, so um, I'm not going to do it, but it's, it's literally three clicks and you're ready to go. So, once it's finished flashing, um, if we look at the disk, you'll see there's two partitions. Uh, the first partition here is the boot partition, and the second one is the root partition. Um, in order to use the Raspberry Pi in headless mode, like out, like as soon as it starts up, we need to do two very particular things. Um, the first one is we need to uh, Enable SSH. So by default, after a certain point, they have it, they have it set so that SSH is disabled because it was security risk. Um, but it's actually really easy to re-enable SSH. So first thing we want to do is actually mount that partition on the SD card so I can interact. So sudo mount, thank you. Sudo mount SDD1, and I'm putting on a mount. So we're going to CD into mount. So this is this is the the boot partition of the of the Raspbian uh, operating system. So it's very simple to, to enable SSH. All you have to do is put a file in here, an empty file called SSH. That's it. And when it boots up, it'll uh, detect that and enable uh, enable SSH. And from that henceforth, unless you disable it uh, afterwards, it'll always start up. And on like Linux or Mac or something like a Unix ish thing, all you gotta do is just touch SSH. Oh, yeah, I forgot I'm in yeah, sudo touch SSH. And if we check real quick, uh, SSH. So now when I put this card in here and it boots up the first time, it will enable SSH. So there's one other thing we have to do. Um, and I, whenever I do this, I'm gonna move away because I have to actually put in like security password and stuff. And to show you what it is I'm gonna to have to do is I'm gonna go back over here and I found this neat little guide that's basically showing you exactly what it is that I'm telling you how to do, which is how to set this thing up as a headless uh, Raspberry Pi. So where she saw the download, burn it, enable SSH. So this is the one we gotta do. We have to add the network info if, if, if you're doing it off of Wi-Fi. So more modern Raspberry Pis, I think, believe from starting with the Raspberry Pi 3 and onward, has Wi-Fi built into it. Um, but you have to set it up so they can actually use it. If you're connecting your Raspberry Pi to your network, be there Ethernet, you don't need this at all. Um, so this is basically what you're going to have to do. In, in that same directory that I made the SSH file, you have to create a file here called wpa underscore supplicant.conf. And you basically need to put in some network relating configuration and then the information about your network. Uh, so I'm gonna move this over here real fast so you can't see me. And I'm just gonna talk while I'm doing this. Come on, Drew. I can't do that, okay. So uh, keep in mind um, if you are doing the desktop thing, you don't actually have to do this at all. Uh, because in, a, in the desktop environment, um, you, what you can do is, uh, it has a kind of like a typical like uh, setup workflow that um, most desktop environments have where it'll have you create like a, a default user and um, set up like Wi-Fi 
and um, you know, uh, things of that nature. Okay. So let me move back over here. Okay. So if we, I show you, there's now a file here called WPA supplicant. Assuming I didn't screw that up when I was typing it just now, when I start up the Raspberry Pi with this in it, it will already be able to connect to the Wi-Fi. So at this point, this is ready to be placed into your Raspberry Pi. So I'm going to unmount this. Mount, or I should probably leave the directory first. Uh, CD sudo u mount uh, mount. So I'm going to reach over here and grab my stick. And I'm gonna sh show you real quick, just, just in case there may be some confusion as to where you actually place this thing. So if you're wondering what I was talking about, this is this is my little 16 gig micro SD card. And here is a Raspberry Pi. So this is the top of the Raspberry Pi. This is the bottom of it. You'll notice right here, there's this little port. This is where you put the SD card. Now, the direction that this SD card is facing is important. Um, if you were looking at the base, like I'm, I'm like I'm looking at it like this, the uh, the little pins on the SD card need to be facing the Raspberry Pi. So if I do this, you just push it in a little bit, and then there you go. So at this point, this should be ready to go. So I'm going to plug this in, and when you first plug it in after installing, it takes a minute to uh, kind of do like an initial boot up. Uh, it, it can vary how long it takes. Um, it could take, it usually takes maybe about a minute to boot up all the way. Uh, but after that, we are going to check my network and see if it shows up. Something else that you, you can do, and I maybe should have done this, but I forgot to mention it, is that other partition that was there that I didn't mess with, the root partition, um, usually something else I usually do is it has a standard Linux file structure. And you could have gone into the um, etc uh, slash hostname file and changed the hostname of the Raspberry Pi. I believe by default on a freshly installed Raspbian installation, the default hostname is just called, I guess it's called Raspberry Pi, I believe. Ah, see, I instantly remembered I forgot to do something. Uh, this is unique to my case. Um, this only matters if the Wi-Fi network you're trying to connect to is hidden, uh, meaning it doesn't like uh, broadcast its uh, ID, like it's, so it's usually visible for most devices to see. And the only thing you have to do here is somewhere in this configuration here, you have to have an extra line that says scan underscore SSID equals one. And what that basically tells it to do is it says, hey, you need to basically scan this, scan for a hidden network. Um, and that's that's why it wasn't showing up. So it, it's it's connected now and I have the, um, the IP address. So if I go over here, there all this stuff. Um, now I should be able to SSH into this now. So we're going to do SSH. Uh, the default user on a Raspberry Pi that doesn't have like another user set up is is Pi, and was this is a yeah. And what the hell get out of here? Okay. And uh, the pass the default password is um, Raspberry. Something I didn't type it. Okay, here you go. We are in the Raspberry Pi uh, that we just installed everything on. At this point, you can do whatever you want. Uh, you will notice this gives you some warnings saying that you know SSH is enabled and that um, you are still using the default password and this is a security risk. So you should um, like log in with the, the default user and you and use the password utility to set the password. Um, but you can do that if you want, but I'm basically going to wipe this after I'm done anyway. But I will show you one thing that you could do that will allow you to change most of the stuff that you want. 
So by default on Raspbian, I believe there should be a utility called Raspy Config. I believe that's what it's called. Oh yeah, sudo Raspy. Can't spell Raspy Config. And yeah, here you go. So this is this will give you most of the stuff you need that you want to do. You can change passwords, network, boot options, localization, advanced stuff, update this. This is well, you can basically do a lot of the um, configuration of your Raspberry Pi that you would want, like right from the onset here. And as I said before, uh, this is a Debian based Linux distribution. So if you want to install things, uh, you can do that with um, with apt. So um, I don't know if I don't is Vim installed on here? Maybe. Uh, no. Nope. So if say I wanted to install Vim, I could do sudo apt install Vim, I believe. Yep. It's going to grab a, update everything. But yes, install Vim. It's going to do its thing. Again, uh, this thing's kind of a lower power thing, so it ain't the fastest thing in the world. Uh, but you know, it 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 it, it does the job. Now, the the Raspberry Pi that I'm using is a couple years old. Um, there are it's a Raspberry Pi three. There's a Raspberry Pi four out now that has, among other things, it has gigabit Ethernet, which is really nice. Uh, the other thing that's unique about it is you can actually get it with up to like four gigs of RAM, which basically makes it a little lightweight desktop, which is crazy. Um, okay, so it's done. So at this point, we should be able to run Vim, and there you go. I installed Vim through the uh, default uh, package manager that Debian-based distros do. So like this is similar to if you use something like Ubuntu, it, it works the same way. And there you go. You have now successfully set up from scratch a headless Raspberry Pi that you can just log into remotely and just tinker around at your leisure. Uh, do keep in mind, as I said before, if you are installing the uh, the desktop version, you do not probably need to do most of this stuff. You would just flash it, plug it in, start it up, and then use the interface to do a lot of this other setup. Uh, but if you tend to want to use this to tinker with, this is a nice way to do it too. Uh, so that's what I got for this video. Um, if, you, if you like this video, if, you, if you're looking forward to seeing more of these little Raspberry Pi related things, uh, drop me a like, subscribe, comment down below if there's any particular things you'd be interested in seeing involving Raspberry Pis. Uh, at the moment, I have three things that I have lined up to show you all to set up. One being um, the next cloud thing that I mentioned in the previous video, I did like a little uh, overview of in a previous video. I'm going to show you how I have that set up in my, on my Raspberry Pi. Uh, one's going to be how to set up a retro game console on it, which I have in, my, in our bedroom, which is super fun to use. And the third one being a network wide ad blocker, which is amazing, by the way. And, uh, if you uh, want to follow me on any media, I got uh, some links down there for like Discord, Twitter. Uh, if you would like to support the channel, and I love you so much, there's some links down there to do that below as well. With that, y'all come on back now, and I'll see you next time.